Have you ever got so hopelessly lost, whether you're uh, out for a long walk or uh, trying to drive somewhere in the car, that you end up at your de destination far, far later than you intended? Uh, you know you're in trouble, don't you, when you uh, ask for directions and the people you ask have no idea what you're talking about. They say, uh, Bromley? I have no idea where that is. You know you're in big, big trouble if that is how lost you've got. Well, what we're dealing with in the book of Deuteronomy, which is our theme for thought for the day this week, is something a little bit like that. The people of Israel, God's people, have been hopelessly delayed on their journey. And the story is introduced for us in the first verses of the book. And this is how it goes. These are the words Moses spoke to all Israel in the desert east of the Jordan. It takes 11 days to go from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea by the Mount Seir Road. In the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses proclaimed to the Israelites all that the Lord had commanded him concerning them. That's a pretty strong hint there, isn't there? The words in brackets, it takes 11 days. That's supposed to be an 11 day journey from Horeb, that is at Mount Sinai where they received the law shortly after coming out of Egypt to Kadesh Barnea, which would have been uh, uh, just about the full uh, length of their destination. And it's an 11 day journey and 40 years after leaving Egypt, they still haven't got there. And so if we were to give the book of Deuteronomy a, a subtitle, we might call it this nearly there, nearly there. Because uh, those 40 years of journeying were not spent uh, going at a constant, extremely slow rate. Rather, the bulk of that time was spent overlooking the River Jordan in the, uh, we're told, verse 1, in the desert east of the Jordan, ready to go into to, uh, the promised land, but not quite able to do it, nearly there. That's what we're thinking about this week. And I think the book of Deuteronomy has a setting that maybe we feel is relevant to us. You see, we've been in lockdown now for pretty much 12 months with uh, a few little uh, gaps in the middle. But uh, 12 months ago, we entered lockdown and here we are with life still not returned to normal and uh, uh, probably not likely to do so for uh, at least a, a number of months. Um, uh, and we may feel, well, look, we're nearly there. We can kind of, uh, we can smell normality. We can peek over and think that normality will be coming sooner or later, but we're not there yet. We're nearly there, but not yet. And that can be a really frustrating time can be a time of great anxiety, it can be a time of real boredom as we say, you know, I've, I've had enough of this. When will the waiting be over? But in another, in another sense, Deuteronomy is a picture for the whole of Christian experience. And that's how it's often been taken by Christians down through the centuries. There's another sense in which we are nearly there. You see, Jesus has died and has risen. Those things happened 2,000 years ago. We've been set free from the slavery to sin, like the Israelites who've been rescued from slavery in Egypt. But we're not yet there. We've not yet been taken to heaven. We're uh, in the intermediate uh, time. We are nearly there. The desert east of the Jordan, elsewhere in scripture called the plains of Moab. That is our, our life here and now. And sometimes that waiting can be a really, really difficult experience. So our, my hope for this week is that the book of Deuteronomy is going to give us some helpful pointers to know how to exist in a life when we are nearly there, whether that means nearly at the end of lockdown or whether that means nearly in heaven, but not quite there. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the book of Deuteronomy. We thank you that the Israelites went through that experience of being nearly there. And we thank you for the lessons that you taught them and uh, we ask you to teach us those lessons this week so that in our nearly there existence here and now, uh, we may uh, follow you faithfully. And we pray these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I hope you're going to be able to join me every day this week. Just five minutes or so, Bible verse or two, a reflection and a prayer. God bless you and have a great day. Amen.